Hi, this is Homer from Spitfire Audio, and these will be a few really simple tips that I wish I knew earlier, especially when I started off. Um, they're logic heavy simply because that's the door that I use, but I certainly come in handy in my workflow, so I want to pass them on just in case they might be useful to somebody else. At the beginning of each session, there are always a few things that I set up straight away, uh, one of which is capture recording. So, for example, if I play along some music, and I really liked that take, or I thought it was a really good idea, um, but I forgot to press record, like so. Capture recording then allows me to recall the last thing I played in. It's a really good function and you can find it by either right clicking or control click here, customize control bar and display. And at the bottom you can see capture recording. Make sure it's clicked and you'll see the icon coming up in your toolbar here. The next thing I'll do is MIDI chase. The chances of me playing a lengthy note are pretty high, but I don't always want to go back to the start of the note to be able to listen back to it. So what I do, I go to File, Project Settings, MIDI, Chase. Make sure this is ticked, Notes here and Notes down here. And this then allows me to play back the note at any point of this MIDI information. can save a lot of time and also if I have multiple instruments playing at the same time and I'm mixing, I, I want to avoid missing out on any other notes not playing. At the top right of your player or plugin, you can see a link icon that I turn on as well because this one will allow you to go from channel to channel whilst the corresponding window is opening. So I don't have to keep closing and opening it. If I do want it to disappear and reappear, I've uh, currently set up a, a shortcut for that on V, which I think is the preset on, in Logic on Mac, which can do that really quickly because I do have to go into the player very frequently. If you don't have it set up, you can go into Logic Pro X and go to key commands and do it in here. Something else I thought was really useful was opening a channel from a different project. So at the top right here, you can see your browse icon. And that one allows you to go through different files and folders. And you can open a logic session within here. And you can see all the channels that I've used in that project. If, say, for example, I wanted to recall the Shivering Space 2 from my Phobos session, I just make sure to click everything here, press add, and it appears in my session here. That saves me from having to close this session, open the other project, and then come back to this one. I use it quite often if I work on either different versions of the same project, or if I have a certain setting in my player, and I wanted to recall it because I think that might work in this project as well. Another useful function is Learn MIDI CC Automation. On my first two faders, I usually have set up uh, expression and dynamics, but there are so many functions within our libraries that I sometimes want to use on a fader as well. Say, for example, I want to have the volume wobble on a fader. What I can do is I can simply right-click or control-click, Learn MIDI function, move the fader that I want to use for this parameter, and will automatically sync. So then I can play and move the fader at the same time. If I want to assign a different parameter to automation, say for example, a high pass filter in Phobos, I set my channel to latch. Open Automation. And if I move this parameter, it will automatically assign to... Automation over here. However, don't forget to turn off Latch after because everything that you move will then be recognized in automation. If I played it in a bit clumsy, I can go 
closer in here and then adjust anything that I wanted to adjust. So I think these are all the tips I wanted to show for now. Um, thank you very much for listening.